For over a year, investigative reporter Andy Judson has been investigating Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools. The adult charter school gets funded by taxpayer money. With campuses throughout California, Highlands enrollment has grown to more than 15,000 students. Last night, we brought you the final episode, and many who have watched have asked questions about how charter schools operate and get funded. Well, Andy is back with an expert on this topic. Yeah, meet Dr. Frank Adamson. He has researched education for years and its systems, and he has published research for agencies like the United States Department of Education with over 40 publications. We went to him to get a better understanding of California's complex charter school system and also brought him our investigation's findings. Kind of look like at the United States as 50 different countries, really 13,000 little school district countries that we have to study. So, you know, we have local school boards and they run the show. School boards run the show for traditional public schools and charter schools in their districts. Charter school is a charter between a school and the authorizing agent, which would be usually a school district. Where it gets complex is while many charter schools are overseen by a school district, they can also operate independently. So they function autonomously. A lot of times schools want to claim the public just because they receive the public money, but that doesn't really tell the whole picture. Sometimes the charter school will call itself a public school, other times a company. Adamson says he has seen charter schools cherry pick how they define themselves. So when there is a desire to convince the public, you hear the term public charter schools. When you're trying to convince an audience of funders that your uh, approach is very innovative, you will hear the term, we're a tech-based company. It's something we noticed with Highlands. Technology coupled with human greatness is going to get us where we want to be. How Highlands Charter School spends millions of public school funds was a main focus of our investigation. We reviewed two years of Highlands expenses and found they spent over $3 million on travel. So in a nonprofit charter school, you can funnel money in different ways. When I look at a budget, I'm looking to see, are those monies going to the classroom and will they end up benefiting the student or are they benefiting the, the management side? like high salaries for the charter school senior management. We asked him about the salary of Highlands Executive Director, Doc Smith. Would you say $350,000 in pay and benefits for a year would be among those lines of a high salary for that a leader? That seems like a high salary in education. My salary is public uh, and I'm a professor at Sac State and I don't make anywhere close to that. Mm -hmm. I do want to bring up one other thing that you didn't have in yeah. your notes, mm -hmm. which is I went through the listing of leadership and it struck me that there was a lot of correctional facility expertise. For example, Doc Smith spent 29 years in corrections, not education. And out of the 10 Highlands board members, half come from law enforcement and corrections. It's something Adamson saw when researching charter schools in New Orleans. So I get very nervous when I see possibly a correctional approach being applied within the education system. Another aspect of Highlands that drew his attention was that the school has really no competition for students. The theory is that charter schools will compete against each other and the public schools and that competition will produce better results for students and families. Because it's an adult school, it's not necessarily like other schools within Twin Rivers competing for those students. Yes, I mean, Highlands is an unusual situation. It's a very niche area within education, within the education sector. And so I don't know what the incentive is for Highlands or any institution to improve when there's actually nobody else out there to do it. And there, that's the fundamental approach of the, of the system. When it comes to charter schools, Dr. Adamson says one of the main issues is lobbying. That's why he says while the charter school system needs more oversight and policy, there also needs to be in-depth conversations about passing legislation. Becca. Andy, great work this week. Thank you. If you missed any of the episodes of the Wild West of Education, you can watch all four of them on YouTube or ABC 10+. Just look for the app on your Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV.